Okay, now let us get into this video. Now, this is the first of quite a few videos I intend to make to try and understand why so many black women are dying in childbirth in the United States of America and also the United Kingdom. We're talking about first world countries with resources. People come to these countries to train. So I can't seem to understand why they are incapable of delivering black babies. What's going on? Now, there are so many layers to this. And this is the first one, the first layer. And we've got to go back in time to understand, to lay foundation, right? Now, I will be using the work of a Harriet A. Washington. And the book is Medical Apartheid. Now, this book, every black family should have not one copy, not two, but three copies of this book. Because best believe information on the internet is greatly sanitized, right? And they are removing a great lot of it. Let us get into James Marion Sims, the butcher, the man they consider the father of modern day gynecology. James Marion Sims, he was born into a struggling family of 10 in Hanging Rock near Lancasterville, South Carolina in 1813. In his autograph, autobiography, The Story of My Life, Sim described how, oh, despite a career as an indifferent media course student, he gained entrance first to South Carolina Medical College and then to Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. This man wasn't even brilliant, right? Let us pick up some more from here. Sims acquired a total of 11 women slave with vasocovaginal fistula from their masters by promising to lodge, board, and treat them. And he built a Spartan wooden building where he conducted surgical experiments on them for the next four years. Now listen to how Harriet A. Washington described the times that um, James Marion Sims were, 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 was working in. During the Victorian period, layers of dresses signal sexual chastity, and doctors were not in the habit of viewing women's unclothed bodies. Not even their professional stature gave them license to gaze at women's genitalia. When Sims undertook his fistula experiments, even the term gynecology was a few years in the future. Instead, women's doctors averted their eyes in a chivalrous, chivalrous fashion as they knelt to tend to the modesty, modestly clothed ladies of their time of their class. Relying upon their sense of touch beneath voluminous Victorian skirts. Well, Listen to how he tend to the black slaves, the black women. Listen to this, right? History will want you to believe he protected their modesty. Let's get into this. However, Sims working with enslaved blacks was constrained by no such delicacy. He made the women undress completely, then kneel on hands and knees, while he and several physicians took turns inserting a special speculum, he had devised to open the woman's vaginas fully to view. I saw everything as no man had seen before, marveled Sim. Montgomery's physicians flocked to Sim's shack to see what no man had seen before. So did prominent citizens and local apprentices. The surgeries themselves were terribly painful. Not only had Sims to close the unnatural opening in the ravaged vaginal tissues, he had to make the edges of, the op of those openings knit together. Several male doctors had initially assisted Sims by holding down the enslaved women as he made incisions. But within a year, they could bear neither the bone-chilling shrieks of the women nor the lack of progress any longer. The doctors left, leaving the women to take turns restraining one another. My God, my God, my God. Right? Let us continue. 
right? Because we have some honorable mentions. Because you need to understand that cesarean, cesarean sections that a lot of you women enjoy, that a lot of black women are dying while getting, right? Cesarean sections were perfected on black women, which brings me back to a judge in America who lost her daughter-in-law to a cesarean section. I can't remember the judge's name, right? But she lost. I remember seeing her just crying. That procedure was perfected on black women. And today they can't seem to get it right, especially at prestigious hospitals. Let's get into this, right? Now, we'll pick it up from here. Dr. Francois Marie Perfurst use enslaved black women to perfect cesarean section performing four such deliveries on them between 1822 1831 and 1830 he performed his first successful cesarean on a woman prefers described as a fat colored primperia a woman giving birth for the first time with a contracted pelvis 29 of the subsequent 36 southern surgical cases to duplicate and perfect the procedures were performed on black women. Perverse contemporary Dr. Ephraim McDowell was the first to perform an overotomy removal of an ovary successfully and he perfected this dangerous and excruciatingly radical surgery on his four slave women okay now let us get into another one dr pc spence of pittsburgh virginia who devised a novel surgical procedure for bladder stones after equally painful surgical experiment on slaves. The discovery of Robert Jennings, who eventually invented typhoid vaccine, were also tested on blacks. Right? We are laying foundation. We are connecting some dots right and we have to go into the past to understand so we can build as to why these doctors in first world countries doctors and midwives are unable to deliver black babies what's going on right so with the book medical apartheid we have some evidence to show you courtesy of the brilliant Harriet A. Washington, that they use black women to perfect gynecology. They use black bodies, right? And they did not use any pain relief most of the time because they did not think we deserve any. We could take it. We, we, we could manage the pain better, right? No, I'm coming back with another videos quite a few videos to add so we can connect the dots so we can paint a picture of what is going on why in these first world countries they cannot deliver black babies black mothers are coming up dead along with their babies we need to pray to the most high use critical thinking and before i go i can't understand with so much evidence why people would Take the demon juice. I, I, I can't understand why you trust these doctors with so much evidence out here. Anyway, we need to seek the faith of the Most High. Let us pray and say glory be to the Most High.